Hey, this is Jim, and I'm going to be teaching you a little bit, bit about corn shell. First, what exactly is corn shell? Well, when the Unix operating system was created, it wasn't very user friendly. So they built some wrappers around it to make it easier to use and more user friendly. The first wrapper was called Born Shell, which was invented by a guy whose last name was Born. Afterward came out C Shell which is basically it looks like the C programming language as a structured C programming language so if you're familiar with C programming you can probably pick up C shell quite fast and lastly well not lastly actually but afterward came corn shell corn shell was invented in the early to mid 80s by a guy named David Korn it is a superset of the born shell in other words anything that you can do in the born shell you can also do in corn shell now, in order to use the corn shell, you got to know where it lives, so let's find it. Now, in Unix, the easiest way to find a command is type which space and then name of the program. In this case, uh, corn shell is known as ksh. And this says that if it's in slash bin slash ksh, if you type this command and it comes back and says, object not found or program not found in my path or something to that effect as for example this see nothing comes back I'll speak to your system administrator and ask him or her where the corn shell exists and then because you need to know it so I already wrote a program a very simple program but uh, let's take a look at it and get you familiar with some of the fundamentals of corn shell. Okay, now the reason why we need to know where corn shell existed is because when you run a corn shell program or when you write one, you need to tell the operating system where it resides. So, this very first line that says pound exclamation point slash bin slash ksh, that says that this program is going to have commands in it that can be understood by this or can also be understood by the Unix operating system so a couple things to note that slash bin uh, excuse me that pound exclamation point slash bin slash ksh does need to be on the very first line it does need to start in the very first column and there can be nothing else on that line that's just about as picky as it gets. Everything else is pretty easy, pretty smooth, and corn shell is very forgiving about white spaces and stuff like that. As a matter of fact, if you look down here, you can see that this line is indented and this line isn't, and we have blank lines. All that's perfectly okay. As a matter of fact, I encourage you to put in white space where you think it will help make the program easier to read and I also encourage you to indent uh, to to make structure of the program for example if you write a function which we'll get to later on but a function is just a group of commands to run if you indent all those commands at the same width then it becomes pretty obvious that they're a block of code and they're supposed to be together so take a look at the second line it's a blank line uh, it's white space it's good stuff, use it. Next line is a comment line. What this does when you see that pound sign, it says that anything after the pound sign is a comment. Now, the only exception to that is this very first line where it says pound exclamation point. If you see the pound exclamation point on the very first line, that means that hey, I'm writing a program that can be understood by this. Okay, Put comments in, they'll help you out later. And also, they'll help other people out who use your program. And the neat thing about it is, is if you're on call or you wrote a program and you don't put comments in, somebody's going to call you up and say, what does this do? But if you put comments in, then it saves them from, and saves you from getting a call at 2 a.m. in the morning about what a program does. Okay. Basically, what corn shell and other programs do is they take stuff in and they usually do something with it and they put stuff out. 
in this case, what we have uh, is we're putting something out. Now, the way that corn shell outputs to your screen is through the print statement. Anything within the double quotes gets printed, and at the end, it automatically prints a carriage return for you. So this will print hi, this is a test, and then it will print a new line, and on the output, the output would start uh, on the next line after that. We'll take a look at that when we run the program. Next is another blank line, just to try to make things easy to read. Um, like I said, you can indent, and I encourage you to indent when you're blocking code off. And the last thing here I want to show you is you can put comments at the end of lines. It's perfectly okay. They don't have to be on the they don't have to be on their own individual line. And so let's ex exit this and then we will go out and run the program. So in order to run a program, you have to make it executable. In order to do that, you go change mod u for user plus x for execute and the name of the program. So this is going to give me execute permission for example 1.ksh. Now by the way, you don't have to end your programs with the .ksh. I recommend it. This way people looking at the directory, uh, the contents of the directory can see, oh yeah, this is a corn shell program. So in order to run it, what you do is you put a dot, slash, and then the name of the program. Now what this does is it says dot is my present directory. So it says in my present directory, find this example 1.ksh and run it. That's all it says. So and by the way, if you don't know this, in Unix the forward slash is the separator between directories. So, as you can see, it, from the print statement, it printed out two lines, and it did, in fact, put a carriage return after the first line, and it started printing out to the second line, and it printed another carriage return. So, that's all we're doing for today, and I hope you enjoyed. More videos to come in the future.